Titty fuck him, he'll give you a free tattoo. And honestly, he's got like nice big bees, they're not bad. Like, I love it when he runs that deal. He has saved me a fortune. I've been getting into collecting coins recently. Uh, I don't have any like rare or exotic ones, I just need like pocket change. I've just been really getting into pocket change lately. I look forward, can you split set this here? Yeah. Uh, I look forward to spending like real dollars so I can get change back, put it in my pocket, you know, go to like a guy who has like a bucket and a bell, just take the bucket, they don't care. Um, scoop your hand in, you know. Fill up your pocket. I get home, it makes me feel good because when I get home, what I do is I take out the change from my pocket and I put it in a glass jar, not so dissimilar from this glass jar. And it makes me feel like I'm doing something with my money because I am financially illiterate. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, the world seems crazy and dark and scary most of the time. But when I get come home and I can put 75 cents in a glass jar, I feel like future me is looking back at present me and be like, you're gonna be all right, kid. You're gonna be all right. I don't mean to brag, but I've got about $87 in loose change right now. Thank you, thank you. Got a couple of sacks of weas in there, some half dollars. Got about all the state coins, some in triplicate. And uh, I'm doing all right. I'd probably have more change if I didn't like to treat myself sometimes. Um, what I do is I come home and like, you know, I, I was a good boy today, I deserve a treat. And I'll shake out a couple good slugs from my jug and um, I will fill my pocket with legal tender. It's just bulging with legal tender. And then I walk down to my favorite coffee shop and it's like doing leg day, just one leg by the time I get there, it's so heavy this bulging with legal tender. And then I get there and I'm like, hello, hi, I, w I would like a large iced coffee, please, with oat milk uh, in light ice. You gotta say light ice. I don't know if, how many of you know this or not, but if you're not saying light ice and you're ordering an ice beverage, you are getting ripped off. It is highway robbery. I didn't come down here with hard earned legal tender to get four sips of coffee before I'm hitting the bottom. That's nonsense. I'm paying for this coffee in loose change. You work in a coffee stand. We are both poor. Where is the class solidarity here? Save the heavy ice for those corporate fat cats with their brown leather shoes and fancy neckties. Give them three sips of coffee before they hit the bottom. Give them a headache at 2 p.m. in the afternoon and make their day suck. Turn the screws on them for once. Not me, not another poor person. Why are you doing this to me? You gotta say light ice, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I have this dream where I just like give, I not give up, I quit my life and I just move to New York and I become the best barista in the financial district. And for six months, I, lear I learn everybody's drink. I'm nailing, I'm getting it down. I'm everybody's best friend. And then after six months, I come in and I've got a big bag of mushrooms and I've got a big bag of molly and I start loading up everybody's drinks. And I'm like, there's gonna be love and empathy in the financial sector today. It's not just gonna be kill, 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 take, 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 not today. And then I asked a friend of mine who, he works at a bank if he thought my plan would work. And um, he said no. Um, he said I think what would, he said that giving giving finance bros hallucinogens like that is how cryptocurrency came to be. And, uh, that is definitely a scam. And he was like, you should just 
keep putting your change in a jar, honestly. <laughs> that might be your best option. Uh, you probably can't tell this by looking at me, but I am a pillar of our society. I, I volunteer at libraries all over the Seattle area. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, they, they don't know that I volunteer, but uh, I figure it's the thought that counts, really. What, what I do is I go in and I hide pre-rolls in the young adult book section. Just like halfway through an Animorphs. This is going to be a lot cooler now. I'm trying to encourage young readers, trying to foster a sense of curiosity giving back to the community, you know, I'm doing my part. I put, I put acid in the religious section, but, uh, that's for other reasons, though. Uh, I am, I'm two years older than Luke, uh, but I have better hair than him. The trade-off is that he has a better beard than me, and a far better beard, but... That's fucking rude. <laughs> but my hair is thinning. My hair is currently thinning. It's not where Luke's at, but it's thinning. And uh, I, say, I say thinning, not balding, because it's not really leaving my body. It's just sort of trickling down the back of my neck. It's going into the recesses on my back right now. It's like a, it's on a great migration. It's, uh, it's going into retirement right now. Turns out my ass is the Florida of my body. It's just all gray hair and swampy down there. <laughs> Full of drugs. I've gotten rid of the invasive species of crab though, so things are, things are looking up for me. Uh, men and women, not that different, really. Not that different. I think I've figured out the, the core difference between men and women. I'll share it with you now. The, real, the only real thing that separates men and women is uh, it is not a compliment to gag while going down on a woman. That's it. That's the only real difference between us. Um, I recently learned that gas station boner pills are not a replacement for antidepressants. But they will help you fill a void, though. I don't actually take any prescription drugs, um, but I, I like going down on women who do because it turns it into like a mental health salt lick. It's like prescription homeopathy. It's, it's like micro-dosing SSRIs, you know? Like, I'm not trying to do the whole thing. I just want to take a little bit of the edge off at the end of the day. But now I've created another problem for myself. I, I have a Pavlovian response to my depression now, and so every time I get sad, I get a heart on. Uh, some, some people say they have resting bitch face. Some people say they have resting psycho face. I should be so lucky. When I smile, I have active shooter face. Where are you going? Yeah. Or somebody had taken me aside in high school and been like, you don't need Algebra 2. We're going to take you out of that class and put you into a special education class where we teach you how to smile properly. <laughs> Maybe your life will turn out better. Maybe you'll be able to afford a car with two working windows one day. <laughs> uh, exciting news for me, the, the crows that I feed have now brought me not one, but two ginger chew candies. And a shiny rock. So I guess the acid I'm putting on their food is starting to pay off. I'm trying to work with the crows. I want to be the crow ally. I don't want to be the crow boss. You know, I'm trying to team up. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm luring them into my apartment. And... Uh, I have sewn many small perches in my trench coat. Obviously, I have a trench coat. And I'm training them to sit in that. So when I go grocery shopping, uh, which I like to do wearing roller skates, um, and I'm skating around the store, I'm stealing the big bottles of kombucha, I'm stealing gluten-free pizzas, you know, I'm skating around. 
if you're going to Whole Foods, you gotta steal something. That's the rule. That's just the rule. That's just the rule. And so I'm skating around with my stolen goods and a trench coat full of crows. And sometimes an assistant manager will just kind of eyeball you a little too hard. And I'll slide up to him and be like, you, you trying to get murdered today? He's like, what? Then I throw open my coat and my flock of feral crows descends on their organic corn display, tearing it asunder. And that assistant manager who, you know, he's just doing his job. He doesn't make enough money. He's got to make the split second decision. Does he deal with me stealing the big bottles of kombucha and gluten-free pizza? Or does he deal with this marauding army of feral crows tearing up his produce section? Every time they get the crows, they get a big broom, shoo them out the door, they come home to me, we celebrate with more drug-laced meats. <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship, it's quid pro quo. I'm taking, I'm taking down Jeff Bezos one shopping trip at a time, all right? I'm doing my part, doing my thing. Uh, I'm a busy guy. I get home, I don't always have time to make myself a nice meal. Um, and here's a hack, a life hack I want to share with you guys. Uh, to speed your time up, to speed your day up. If you, if you get home and you're hungry, you don't have time to get out the door, you can just grab a can of soup, pop the top on it, and chug it like a thick soda. You don't have to heat it up. All the nutrition all the calories, all the stuff, right in the can. Heating up soup is, is propaganda by big soup. They want you to like waste time. Think about the dishes you don't have to do. You know, you save on electricity, you, this, you save on water, it's all right there, you just chug it. But here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. You're gonna wanna start on a smooth soup, start on a broth, start on a bisque, start on something easy, a beginner's cold soup, okay? Work your way up to the chunks, because you will get hurt. Work your way up to the minestrone, the, the pot roast, the Italian wedding, okay? Like, these are complicated cold chuck soups. I, you're a smart crowd. I don't probably even need to say this, but um, just to clarify, clam chowder. Not a chuggable liquid, okay? Like, that's a dessert soup. You know that. It's a, chunky pudding, it's a briny flan. You, you eat it with a little gelato spoon so you can really savor the flavor, you know, swish and a swirl and taste everything. Really get it in there. Okay, just wanted to let you know, just wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I, I don't understand people when they're upset about things, they say stuff like, you know what, why don't you suck my dick? Or like, hey, how about you eat my ass? Because now, now I know in your mind that your dick and or ass is so gross that it would be a punishment to, for someone to put their mouth on it. Like, you've already lost the argument. If you tell me to eat your ass and you're mad at me, I'm like, gross, dude, go wipe your butt. Like, maybe that's why you're talking to me all sassy right now. You got an itchy butthole and you just need to go take care of that. Come back when you're cleaned up. Get a wet wipe, okay? Uh... I have a vasectomy. All right, some people cheer at that point. They're like, that guy needs one. Okay. Um, if you don't know what it is, maybe you don't know what it is. If you don't know what it is, it basically just means that I have diet cum. Um, it's like same great flavor, half the calories. And somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, all right, you say you got one, but how do you prove it? I was like, well, that's very simple. Uh, you just take a sip and swish it around your mouth. It's a textural thing. It's like pulpless orange juice. She did. She's like, wow, I can't believe it's not gin. <laughs> Guys, I don't think my family likes me very much. Uh, when I went to college, I got a degree in pottery, and nobody tried to stop me. <laughs> I, do, I do like clay, though. It's a great medium, you can make useful things out of it, lasts forever, and if you mess up, you can throw it down and come back to it later. It's recyclable. It's not like wood. Wood is so finite. You mess up with wood, 
Now you gotta go back to a Home Depot and buy the same stuff you just bought like 45 minutes ago and Tam in the lumber department is definitely judging you. So that means that I have to drive to the other Home Depot that's further away so I don't get that judgment. I'm almost 40 years old. I don't know how to read a tape measure. I hate woodworking, okay? It makes me very insecure. My father, he was a great woodworker, but he never really showed me anything. I was like, Dad, help me build a tree house, please. And he was like, no, you'll get more out of this if you figure it out yourself. And so I didn't really end up with a tree house as much as like a sniper platform. Um, and that was kind of the last time I ever really built anything. And then my dad died. Um, and my mom, she was, she was flipping through the coffin catalog. And I don't, I don't know if you guys know, but those things are very expensive. And so I was like, Mom, save your money in a jar. Don't worry about it. I got this. I'm gonna get over my insecurities. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna build my father a coffin. We, we, had, we had that cremated. <laughs> But I got to put my pottery degree to use, and I made him a cool urn that doubles as a bong, and now me and my dad hang out all the time, and I feel like it's pretty good, so. All right, that's all my time, thank you.